And so what are some of the mistakes that women make in long distance relationships? One of the big ones is that they try to stay connected with a guy all the time. They think if I'm always in front of him and I'm always talking to him and I'm always connecting with him, then he will really like me and really care about me and feel amazing about me. But it's that's usually not the case. And, and it's really difficult to stay engaging and to stay interesting if you're trying to connect with them all the time. Don't try to stay connected with them all the time. It's not that important to do. And in fact, it's, it's better to give him some space. If you want him to miss you, there's got to be some space. He, he can't miss you if you're there all the time, if you're constantly reaching out to him, if you're constantly trying to talk to him, finding out what's going on, is he okay, is he thinking about you, you know, having the same conversation, boring conversation over and over and over again because you don't know what else to talk about other than just sending him and saying, hey, what's going on, what are you doing today, here's what I did, oh, I did my laundry, that's really cool, you know, and it's like, I went to work, it's, it's boring. So another mistake that women kind of tend to make is they'll, they'll go to the other extreme, the other opposite side of the extreme, which is leaning too far back. And what will end up happening then is that a guy will think that you're not interested in him or he might think that you're playing games with him or something like that and you don't want him to feel that way. Another mistake that a lot of women make is they'll build negative emotional experiences with a guy because they want some type of emotional response from him. And I, I totally get that and I totally understand that, but you don't want negative responses with him because then he'll start associating you in a negative light and you don't want him to do that. And things that, that create negative emotional responses are things like calling him and baiting him for certain responses constantly, right? Trying to get him to say that he, he likes you and that he loves you and, you know, asking him if, if, if he still likes you and stuff like that. Or for instance, calling him and trying to re, uh, seek reassurance from him, right? Like asking him if things are wrong, if he's seeing other people, all that kind of stuff. And uh, another one is calling and texting with him and arguing all the time because you you know that's going to keep him on the the connection longer. I get women that talk about doing these things all the time in our community where they'll say things like they've they're 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 like, well, you know, this is what I did. We argued, but you know, I, I really wanted to connect with them and, and it's just it's the wrong way to do it. And I'll talk about what you should be doing instead here in just a second. So let's talk about the connection part first. And so a lot of women are like, oh, okay, how often should I be connecting with him? How many times should I connect with him? How many days should I connect with him? And should I do it every single day? Should I do it every other day? And really the answer is that it, it, it kind of is up to you. It, you don't need to connect with him every single day. And sometimes it might be better to not connect with him every single day. Uh, some couples want to because they want to stay connected that much, but it, it's actually giving him some room to breathe. It, it's like when he's when you're away from something for a while, when you come back to it, all of a sudden it's it's more exciting, right? If you if you're around something, there's there's uh, something out there. It's I, I can't remember the exact name of it. It's something like the the law of. Um, uh, it's it, it's about being around somebody all the time. Familiarity, that's what it's called. It's called the law of familiarity. And what it, the law of familiarity states is that the more that you're around something, the more you start taking it for granted. And so you want to create some kind of distancing. There, there's something that I talk about in the Forever Woman program, if you have that of mine, where you, you create scarcity, right? You, you spend some time, you spend some time away because it's that time away that makes him miss you and makes him think about you and makes him wish that he was with you again, assuming that you're doing the right things when you're connected to him. So how do you create a connection with a guy? And there's, there's really two big types of ways that you create a connection. The first one is creating a connection to yourself. And this is really important because the more you create a connection to yourself in the right way, the more that you'll 
connect with him in the right way naturally, doing it without trying a bunch of things. You don't have to try to do a whole bunch of stuff and play some games and, and read all my books about how to text a guy because you naturally will come from a place of, of feeling good, feeling happy, feeling strong, feeling worthy. And so you can use those text messages and the words and phrases and stuff that I teach and you can come from a spot that's really, really empowering, which will make you naturally do a lot of those things. And so how do you connect with yourself? What does that even mean? So basically what it looks like is one is changing your belief systems and getting to a place where you really value and you love yourself and you believe that you really deserve a great man and a great relationship. Uh, another way to connect to yourself is connecting to who you are in the moment, connecting to your emotions, connecting to your body, getting inside of kind of your feminine energy and connecting to, to yourself in that way. And then when you connect with a guy from being in your body, being in your emotions, being in the moment, then what ends up happening is you you connect with him through those things and most guys are in their head and they're they're thinking about things and they're very logical or you know semi logical at least they tend to be a little bit more logical they they tend to have more of a difficulty in connecting with their emotions and so if you can connect with your emotions and then connect to him through that You'll give him this experience of being in his emotions because you'll trigger those in him. And, and you'll be more mysterious and you'll be more interesting and you'll be all those things that, that you want him to think of you as in order for him to be attracted and feel good around you and want to be around you more often. And so the next part is connecting with him and actually your communication standpoint of connecting with him. And basically you want to use something that I call the emotional range principle. And, and the way that I talk about this is if you've ever seen a good movie versus a bad movie, right? If you go and see a good movie, overall, the movie gives you a positive emotional experience of of watching it. That's what makes a good movie a good movie. If you think about good movies that you've seen in the past, whether they're comedies or dramas or whatever, right? Like think think of like the the classics like The Godfather, right? If you watch The Godfather, you'll see that there's all these emotions that you experience. You laugh, you cry, you're in anticipation, you're going through all these different things. And because of that, you watch it, you remember it, you want to see it again, you quote it with your friends, you tell your friends to watch it, you bring your friends together and you watch it together and you watch it over and over and over again, right? You want to be like a good movie for him. And the, the easiest way to do that is to do what we were talking about before, which is connecting with yourself. Another way to do that is to connect with him and his emotions through communication. And the, the fastest way to do that is through using questions. Because what you focus on is what you feel. So remember that. What you focus on is what you feel. And if you want him to feel emotions, the fastest way to get him to focus on those things that make him feel something is to ask him questions. So for instance, if I asked you, what's something that you're excited about? Like, what's something that you're excited about in your life right now? Like, what, what, are, you, what are you anticipating? What are you, what are you excited for? What's something that's coming up that, that, uh, that you're really excited to experience or, or do or be a part of? And, and if I ask you that question and you sit and think about it, you'll, you'll start coming up with things that you're excited about, and then you'll start feeling that emotional experience of excitement because you're thinking about things that you're excited about. And you can do that for all kinds of different things, right? You can ask him, you know, what's something that, that, uh, you know, you're scared of what's something that, or, or you can ask him, have you ever gone skydiving? You know, just ask him different questions about different things and it'll elicit emotional responses from him. And the more emotional responses that you elicit from him and he starts to feel the, the more that he'll associate those feelings with you. And then you'll become like that good movie that you, you watched and he'll want to see you over and over and over again. So the next part that we're going to be talking about is, is distancing. So there, there's times, there, there's a thing that I talk about and basically what you want to do 
is you want to mirror a guy's interest level in you. And so if a guy's hot, you can be hot. And if a guy's cold, then you want to be cold. And, and the biggest mistake that women make around this is when a guy gets cold, they tend to chase after him. They start kind of grasping and they're like, oh, he's, he's pulling away. I need to start doing a bunch of things in order to get him back, right? And that's usually the exact opposite of what you want to do. Usually, instead, you want to pull back when he pulls back, but when he's on, you're it's you can jump on and kind of do whatever you want to and connect with him in whatever ways you want to because because it's not a it's not as big of a deal because he's moving forward, he's pursuing you, he's chasing you. And but when once as soon as he's if he starts getting a little bit cold, because there's 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 rhythms in life, right? There's seasons in life. There's times when when you are focused on different things. Maybe you're focused on movies and then, you know, another time you're you're focused on on working out or you're focused on on, you know, underwater basket weaving or whatever your hobbies are, right? Like, you know, whatever it is that you do, there's different seasons that we get into where we focus on different things. And so it's, it's one of those things where he might have his focus on you for a period of time and then take it off of you and put it on something else. Well, that time where he takes it off of you and puts it on something else, you want to pull back. You want to give him space because what it does is it creates a vacuum and it makes him feel like, oh man, like I, there's this thing that I was really connected to and all of a sudden there's a vacuum and now I can come into that space. And so you want to give him that space and that's what ends up making him miss you because he thinks, man, there's this wonderful woman. I felt so good when I was around her and she's so beautiful and, and classy and high value. And, and, you know, I just want to show her off to all my friends and I've told my, uh, you know, the, these people about her and, you know, she's different than all the other women that I've met and, you know, all the things that come up for a guy when he meets a woman who's different. And, and is using my program, The Forever Woman. <laughs> These are the things that he'll say. And so what you want to do is give him some space during that point so he can miss you and crave you and want to want to be around you again and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And so when he, when he pulls back, you want to pull back as well. And so, so what are you doing when you pull back? That's a very important thing because what, what women tend to do when they, they come to me is they're like, okay, this guy pulled back and, and I'm so mad and, and we had such a great connection and now it's over and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like how about you focus on other things, right? Because it's where, like I said, where your focus goes, it, your focus, you focus, you feel what you focus on right? You feel whatever you focus on. And so if you're focusing on the fact that he's gone and that he's doing something else and, 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 but he's still online on social media and is he talking to other women, right? You're just going to get angry. So instead, what you want to do is start focusing on other things in your life. And uh, number one you want to focus on is is creating an abundance of connection. And the abundance of connection is really about connecting with, with, uh, different things in the world because we have a need. We all have a need of wanting to get connection. And if this guy is your only real source of connection, then you're going to constantly kind of go after connection with him. Instead, you want to have a variety of connection in your life so that you don't need to get connection with him. Instead, you can get connection with yourself. You can get connection with animals. You can get connection with friends. You can get connection with family. If you're not in a committed relationship yet and you're doing long distance and he hasn't tried to get exclusive with you or any of that kind of thing, you should be connecting with other men as well and going on dates with other men and creating an abundance of options that you can have in your life. But you definitely want to have a, an abundance of connection. And, and this can also be things like uh, a connection to the universe or a connection to God or a connection to whatever, whatever you believe in spirituality. And so that, that's a really, really important, powerful thing that you can do in the, the place where you're distancing yourself. You're pulling back. You're leaning back. You're giving him some space. 
But other things that you want to do, and, and this is just my suggestion, but what you should really do is put yourself into empowering positive emotional states that you want to experience on a continual basis. And let me explain why. So if you if you have if you've ever been in a garden, if you've ever actually grown some plants and stuff in a garden before, one thing that you know is that you have to tend to the garden. You have to constantly go in and clean up and make sure everything's good in the garden. And if you don't, weeds will naturally just grow in the garden. That's just what happens. And if you let the gre- the weeds grow for long enough without pulling them out, they end up becoming giant weeds and they, they'll take over the flowers or the plants or whatever you planted in the garden because weeds are really good at growing. And so they'll grow and they'll take over the flowers and, and the plants and then you'll just have a garden filled with weeds. Well, it's the same thing with your mind. Your mind, we're, we uh, evolved in a world where we had to constantly worry about danger and what was going on. And so we had to focus on all those things. But now we live in a world where we're bombarded with information and there's always bad things going on in the world. There's just never ending bad things. And you learn about them in your phone and you can get and learn about these things, uh, you know, a minute after it happens. And there's a million different sites talking about all the million different bad things that are going on in the world. And so your mind will naturally go to those things. If you want to experience positive emotional states, if you want to feel love, if you want to feel excitement, if you want to feel gratitude and you want to really appreciate your life and, and, and feel happy all the time, You have to pursue those emotional experiences. They don't grow on their own. You have to plant them. And so my suggestion is that you continually and do this on a daily basis when you're not around your guy, just become your own source of happiness. And the easiest and fastest way to do that is through gratitude. So Think about what you're grateful for on a daily basis. And if you're not grateful for anything, because sometimes I get women that are like, I'm not grateful for anything. What could you be grateful for? If you really wanted to be grateful, what could you be grateful for? What's, what's going right in your life? What, what are things that are happening in your life that, you, that, that are great, that are awesome? right? And and some of those things might be just, you know, the fact that you can feel things, the fact that you can think, the fact that you're alive, that you're, you're healthy, that the sun's out, or or maybe the sun isn't out, but you know, that you live in a, in a, in a cool place or a great country, or, you know, maybe that there's beauty all around you, or that you're able to, to live in, in a, in a good place, or that you have a good job or, or whatever, right? You live during a great time period. You have the ability to, to connect with people on the internet, that you have the ability to, to get all of this information at your fingertips without needing to do necessarily almost anything. And so, you know, what are you grateful for? That's, that's, I've, I've, I'm friends with people from all walks of life, from people that are super rich to super poor, from people that live all over the globe. I, I'm, I'm friends with people all over the place. And, and one of the things that I found is that it doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how successful you are. It doesn't matter any of those things. I, I know some people that are, that are billionaires that are some of the most miserable people I've ever met in my life. And I've met people that, that, you know, barely can make enough money to, to, you know, pay their rent every month. And they're some of the happiest people I've ever met in my life. And so it's not about how successful you are, but it's about how grateful you are and how much you can focus on the things that you appreciate and that you love in your life. And the reason that this is really valuable is because when you go back to the guy that you're connected with, then 
and you're in a happy mood, it's easy for him, one, to make you happy, and two, it's easy for him to win with you. And a guy wants to be with a woman who he can make happy, who he feels like when he's around her, she's happy and she's enjoying her life and, and, and his presence makes her more happy. And if you're already happy, that's what's going to happen is having a guy in your life is only going to enhance your life. You're not going to be desperate to, to cling on to a guy because you're going to have a guy because you're, you're going to be your own source of happiness, your own source of love, your own source of of feeling great in your life and you're only going to allow a man in who enhances your life who who doesn't suck from your life and who you don't need to make you happy and that's that's incredibly important and and if you want a really high quality guy you need to become your own source of happiness and so that's what i suggest is that you focus on your own happiness and two focus on being your own source of value so reinforce the beliefs that you're enough that that you that you're worth it that you're worth more than crappy behavior from men and that you're worth being in a great relationship with because that that like i said with the law of belief transference you'll transfer those beliefs to the guy and the second thing that you should focus on is what you want what you want in your life so get busy thinking about and focusing on and creating the things more of the things that you want in your life one of those things is emotions another one is a great relationship and other things might be you know having ha- having lots of fun or or being successful or what whatever being uh, happy and successful and what you want looks like that's what you should be focusing on